threats. I'm gonna call my dog out. I'm gonna call my dog. Anger. Call the police, man. Desperation. Doesn't have a penny. Doesn't have a thing. What happens when debt? I memorise. Do not touch me again. Tracks you down. Hello, is anybody in? Up and down the UK. Oh, you can't take my. Don't be taking my equipment. We see Britain's most resilient High Court enforcement agents. I've busted my ass to give you what I've got now, mate. Dealing with every debtor's worst nightmare. I will eat my hat. Because if you can't pay... There's absolutely nothing I can do. They'll take it away. Research from a leading campaigning organisation has revealed that 6.5 million households in the UK are struggling with debt. The total household debt has risen by over £350 billion in the last 10 years, with the average amount, including mortgages, predicted to exceed £86,000 in 2022. Seven a.m. High Court enforcement agent Stuart McCracken and colleague Ian Taylor are in Alderley Edge, a wealthy suburb of Manchester, to collect one of the biggest debts they've ever had to recover. A lot of money around here. Yeah. Balance as it stands at the moment is four hundred and six thousand two hundred and seventy-three pounds and thirty-nine pence. Some balance, isn't it? The debtors, Mark and Karen, owe the money to a builder after they failed to pay him for a house they commissioned, forcing him to sell it to a bank at a loss. Imagine being in debt for that much. It really is in the end of the line now. He needs to make a payment. If not, then uh, we will be removing his goods. Here it is. With such a large sum of money owed, Stuart and Ian aren't sure how much they will be able to recover today. Two vehicles there. Won't even scratch the surface. But they must try and get as much as they can for the claimant in either cash or goods. All right, let's go. Let's go and have a chat. All right. He's waiting while we're trying to connect you. That's his car there, isn't it? Gonna give it one more lucky ring. Stuart has already tried to get this case resolved at the property once before. As a result, he has an order from the High Court that allows them to gain entry by force if necessary. Now that is a door knock. Hello, is anybody in? Hello, mate, you okay? You what, sorry? Right, okay. I'll try and give him a ring now. Stuart gets Mark on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mark. Um, I'm currently at your property at the moment, sir. Um, yeah, I know. We, we, my son just told me. Yeah, we, we've got high court rates. So how is it you can make payments, sir? I can't. It's a ridiculous amount. I don't believe I owe it. So there's no way that you can make any sort of payment whatsoever? The most I've got is 5,000. It's not very much. that maybe no. not enough. No. Um, no, 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 no. I've got literally £5,000, that's it. It's not going to be enough, Mark. I tell you what, right, I'll do this. Have a look around inside the house, right? If there's goods for the, to the value of five grand in there... Yeah. I, I will eat my hat. Yeah. My uh, my son will let you in. Right, OK, the OK. Five grand with the stuff that you can lick. OK, no problem. I'll have a look round and then I'll ring you back, Mark. All right, thanks. Mm. With £5,000 appearing to be Mark's best offer, Stuart and Ian must now look for assets inside the house to help offset at least part of the debt. Anybody else like Fort Knox? Cheers. Hello. All right, no worries. But they're in for a shock. The house is almost completely empty. I don't feel the cupboards are empty. Stuart oh. goes to check upstairs. Oh, and he's in for another surprise. Are you Karen? Yeah. I know it must be a stressful time, but the writs in, in your name as well. There's literally there's nothing that you or Mark can do at all. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's, he's offered a payment of 5,000, but it's not, it's not giving me nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's 403,000 pounds at the moment. I'll, I'll come back in a minute, obviously, but I'm just going to carry on just doing inventory of the house. All right. Much up there? No, looks like they've lost everything. When we do come across a defendant that has done very well and is quite wealthy, the stakes are a lot higher for them. They've got a lot more to lose, and it only takes one bad decision to land yourself in hundreds of thousand pounds worth of debt. Stuart and Ian have been at the property for half an hour. Mark hasn't called back to increase his £5,000 offer. The statue that's in the first room on the right-hand side. So Stuart and Ian start an inventory of the few assets of value in the house. Two memorabilia shirts. It's a counter now, this one as well. Yeah. The two signed Manchester United football shirts should fetch a few hundred pounds at auction. But there seem to be few assets of any value. Even the cars outside are of limited worth. But as the claimant has instructed that everything of any value should be removed, they're added to the inventory. Stuart calls the office with an update. We're just at this property now, but it's more or less empty, Gary. But then he hears some surprising news. Yeah, no problem, Gary. I'll speak to you shortly. It seems that the claimant has asked for a £25,000 down payment today to call off the removal. Stuart calls Mark again. Hi, Mark. Right. Um, claimant wants at least 25 we, I mean, it's just ridiculous. He thinks we've got other properties we don't. Well, on the other side of it, though, Mark, you you are living in one of the most prestigious places in the country. There's a fucking massive mortgage on there, yeah. which I'm barely keeping up with, uh, and, and yeah. there's no equity in it. OK, Mark, the city show. It's clear that Mark can't find the £25,000 needed to stop recovery today. Stuart calls the office again. They haven't got it. They're, they're claiming that they haven't got it. The claimant agrees to give the family some more time to raise the cash. Stuart calls Mark back. Right, they're willing to accept the control goods agreement, which means that everything stays here for 48 hours. That's just no good to me. We've got no chance of paying this money back in 48 years, let on 48 hours. Right. Um, so he can have our busted up cars and our rubbish furniture, and he can do a standard three man if he wants. Mm. That'd be great, it'll save me 1,200 quid, the cost of me going bankrupt. He thinks I've got the 25 grand lying round. Fuck mm. me, who's got 25 grand lying round? It's clear Stuart and Ian have found themselves in the middle of a bitter dispute. With both sides refusing to back down, and with very few assets to use as leverage, Stuart will have to use all of his skills and experience to get this highly charged case resolved. Stuart McCracken and Ian Taylor were in Alderley Edge, Manchester, to recover one of the biggest debts they've ever chased. The balance as it stands is £406,273.39. The debtor, Mark, owed the money to a builder, but could only offer the agents a fraction of the debt. I've got literally £5,000, that's it. The house appeared to be virtually empty. I've been through the cupboards, are empty. And upstairs, the situation was clearly taking its toll on Mark's wife, Karen. Here, you can see. But when the claimant phoned Stuart with an ultimatum... Hi, Mark. Claimant wants at least 25. It became clear that Stuart and Ian were in the middle of a very bitter dispute. He thinks I've got the 25 grand lying round. Fuck mm. me, who's got 25 grand lying round? Now, whatever the rights or wrongs of the situation, Stuart is duty bound to get some kind of result for the claimant. It's clear Mark won't pay the £25,000 needed to stop recovery today. So Stuart updates Karen on what they intend to take. The two vehicles are going. The desk in the office, the wall clock. The sound bar, the lamp that's in the hallway, the side table, the actual safe, the TV downstairs, the cinema system, the TV that's in that second bedroom there, the signed football shirts. So that's where, where I'm up to at the moment. 
can tell you what the stress it's caused. My husband, to be honest, has been on the edge, but I can't say how long yeah. we've been fighting this. There's only so much you can take, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there's only so much you can take. Take it, take it, because... What can you do? You've got a shit job. I'm not going to lie, this part is, you know what I mean, usually it comes some sort of range, but very rarely it comes to this point, and it's... So what's the plan going forward, then? Jarvis Allison has been... Since he left us in the mess that we are in. Yeah. Right, I'll ring recovery. Stuart heads downstairs to call for recovery. Got the um, football frames. Right, I've got to take them off for one now. Come on. Stuart and Ian begin to stack the items by the front door. You do mobilisation, mate. I'll see a notice on that one. Okay. It can be extremely difficult when we're dealing with a bit of dispute because the defendant doesn't want to pay the claimant and then we'll have to remove goods. We can't use any of his goods as leverage because he wants us to take it anyway. So we're in between a rock and a hard place. An hour later, a low loader arrives to remove the cars. Minutes later, another recovery vehicle arrives to take away the household assets. Right, turn the lights off. Can try one switch at the time and know which room's which? Despite the claimant's request to remove as much as they can, Stuart and Ian must ensure the family have enough furniture and goods to maintain a decent standard of living. And we'll stick these chairs back around the kitchen table. I think that's everything done on that side. But the strain of the situation has pushed the family to their limits. Do you like some cake in your ass? No, 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 not at all. No, no, I understand, mate. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but... Well, you're really getting stressed now. I'm going to phone the police. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are the police going to do? What are the police going to do? We're going in a minute. We're going in a minute. You've, you've hassled me. You've hassled me for hours. I understand it's stressful, all right, but I'm here to do my job. All right? OK. I wouldn't want two High Court enforcement agents walking inside my property, but we're cool, we're calm, we're professional. We're there to resolve the situation and diffuse any any worries that people may have, but ultimately we're there to do our job and we're there to execute that writ. With tempers fraying, Stuart gets the last items loaded and the recovery van leaves. The list of inventory is there. It's all broken down of exactly it's been taken control of. And who does the valuation on what, how much it's worth? It's, that's it, the auctioneer's doing that. OK, so everything's stored for seven days. It doesn't get sold now, OK, it is stored. So if you can try and get the sort of the next seven days, you'll be fully entitled to get your stuff back, OK? It's not like we're selling it straight away, it is stored. Right, OK. All right. See you later. It's always rubbish when it gets to that stage, isn't it? But yeah. people aren't going to pay. Good, it? it looks like that uh, the family have had enough of the claimants. Looks like that they're living on the bare means. They're not willing to cooperate, they're not willing to make a payment, so we've had to remove the goods. Recent research shows that four out of ten private tenants spend more than 30% of their pay on rent. And parents are spending £850 million each year to help their young adult children pay for accommodation. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Ashford, Kent, to recover a debt of over £11,000 owed in unpaid rent. Our next customer is a Kerry Marden. OK. Her and Shane Marden. Oh, eleven thousand one hundred thirty-three pounds forty-two pence. Oof. The case began eighteen months ago when Kerry and Shane's former landlord took the couple to court over the rent arrears. Both agreed to pay the landlord back in instalments, but now Kerry has defaulted. 
Shane Marden has been paying £15 every two weeks. As far as I understand, Kerry Marden has paid nothing. Kerry and Shane have since split up, and Gary has tried unsuccessfully to get payment from Kerry on a previous visit. Now, I've met this girl before. Now Gary and Connor are on their way back to see her again, to get this case resolved for good. It's actually Shane that told us her new address. So he's not happy the fact that he's paying and she's not? No. Good shout, that man. As they arrive, they spot someone at the window with a smartphone. Oh, they're already recording He's already us. recording us, watch, walking up. What's going on? Alright, can I speak to Kerry, please? She's not here. Can uh, we get her on the phone? Huh? Can we get her on the phone? I'll get her on the phone. But I mean, what's, what is it? She owes some money. I'll be ringing her. Alright. While the man, Kerry's new boyfriend, Steve, gets her on the phone, Gary takes the opportunity to make peaceful access into the house, something the writ allows him to do. They're in the house. They've just come in the house. I didn't let them in. They've just walked in the house. Can I speak to her? Yeah. She's not told you anything about this. I don't this, know anything about this. Hi, Kerry. It's Gary Brown. Do you remember I came to your house about this debt? No. There's still... Eleven thousand pound that's owed. He's he's paying some money, but it's not he's not responsible for all of it. Um, the situation is we're here to try and set up an, a, an arrangement, yeah, or remove goods from the premises. I've just moved in there. Do you know how bad that looks? Well, this needs to be this needs to be sorted. You've brought this on yourself, Kerry. I'm trying to, but you're not doing. You're not coming to anything. You're okay, you said you're trying to. What 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 efforts have you made to sort this in the last year and a half? I'll pass you back to Steve. Hello. What's all this? Eleven grand. Well, I mean, hang on a minute, Kerry. I've just, I've just I've been sitting here watching the TV, not knowing nothing about it all, and they just walked up here now. So it's quite a common thing to see debts being hidden from from partners and I think it's because of embarrassment sometimes bringing up the past obviously there's going to be a few words and a conversation to be had between the two of them once we're out of there but first and foremost the debt needs to be paid five minutes later Kerry is back on the phone hi Kerry hello um how much could you come up with today I don't know. how much um, we normally ask for about for half of the money, which oh. is yeah, which is five and a half grand. Right. If you can come up with five and a half grand, um, then I think that would be reasonable, and then we'll do an arrangement for for the rest. All right. All right. Bye. Gary and Connor give Kerry some time to try and raise some funds, but it's clear that Steve is still in shock about the agent's visit. It's a nice area around here. I don't need this on my doorstep. No, no. Do you know what I mean? I know you're doing your job. Do you know what I mean? I ain't got a problem with that. Steve, you know I, I, mean? I completely sympathise with you, mate. Yeah, this is. Hello? Kerry calls again. Uh, uh, I just want to speak to you. Hello? Hi. My grandson said he can write me a cheque for 6000 to give to you now. That's OK. We can't take checks because it's not cleared funds, I'm afraid. We can take debit or credit card. If, you, if your granddad's they got... They can take credit card, but they can't take checks. It's not acceptable no more. <laughs> He's got a bank card. OK. Because it's... For that amount of money, it would need to go to the office um, for them to take the money. So I'll ring the office now then and tell them to expect a phone call. OK. How much are you offering monthly? A hundred. A hundred a month or a hundred a week? Right. Kerry's granddad has offered over half of the debt as a down payment. It's a surprise result, but the situation is clearly taking its toll. She sounds really upset. Yeah, and yeah I, I mean, I know what it is. Well, I she's mean, put herself in this situation. Because it's not that the money's owed, I reckon it's more an embarrassing thing, isn't it? Because I am. I feel a bit embarrassed. Like, I guarantee no one will actually come up to me and say, 
well, what was all that about? People are made, it's Chinese whispers. Before you know it, I'm Fred West or saying, and you found <laughs> bodies in the garden. 30 minutes later, Gary rings the office to check the money has been transferred. Hi, Jane. Has that gone through or is it um, just... Oh, God, OK. It seems that the payment has been declined. Gary calls Kerry. Hello? Hello. It got declined because my grandfather didn't realise that it was only 4000 in the bank. Right. Um, I know it's not your fault. You didn't know what was in your granddad's account, but I've been here for two hours now. Well, which... It's not like I'm not offering to pay you nothing. Kerry says her granddad can pay £4,000 right now, but it's not the six she offered. Whilst they wait to hear if she can raise the rest of the money, Gary and Connor start an inventory of goods they could seize to offset the balance. It feels like real gold. It's heavy. But then Kerry arrives, and Gary is in for an unexpected surprise. I, I didn't know you were pregnant when I was, you know, when we were just talking about it earlier. I'm going to help you out, right? If your granddad can pay the four thousand pound now, we'll leave. Each situation is different, and everybody's different to the next. So I try not to look at things and make judgments before I actually speak to people because it's very easy to do that. And if somebody's pregnant, then you really have to change the angle that you're coming at. Kerry's granddad's payment of £4,000 goes through. And Kerry has now promised to get the other £2,000 by the end of the day. Gary draws up the arrangement. £4,000 paid now, £2,000 paid by 5pm today, and then £100 a month starting 1st of April. Finally, the case is resolved for now. That's it. Stick to the arrangement that way. We don't need to come back. Well, okay. we'll leave you in peace anyway. Take care, guys. OK, thank you. See Thanks. you later. See you later. It's been a surprising result for Gary and Connor. I think the client will be, will be happy with this. Nice little village like this in the middle of Kent. The last thing anybody wants is enforcement agents knocking on doors, because it's, it's pretty much obvious what we are and who we are, what we're doing. And we're not exactly a bag of crisps, are we? Bag of crisps? Yeah, we're not small, we're not discreet. <laughs> Faced with a delicate situation, Gary and Connor got a good result. But in Stuart and Vic's next case... I don't have the, the money. Let, well, let me just explain, sir. I don't have the money. A debtor who says he can't pay pushes Stuart to the limit. That you belongs to the me. limit. You to touch me again, sir. That I'll ring the police. To to you touch me again, sir. I'll ring the police, That's and you'll right. be arrested. Don't ring the fucking police. Research has revealed that stagnant wage growth and the rising cost of living are major factors contributing to escalating levels of personal debt in the UK. Over the past decade, more than 50% of Britons have seen an increase in their living costs, whilst a quarter of people claim their income has stalled completely, or even fallen. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Presswich, Lancashire. They have a writ to collect a debt of almost £1,800 owed in unpaid parking fines by Graham Morris. Stuart has some details of the car Mr Morris drives. So tell me about Mr Morris. Mr Morris, he's got a Mercedes CL500 outside. It's an old one. Mr. Morris, an accountant, incurred the fines after parking his Mercedes without buying a valid ticket. Is this the one here? Here it is, this one here. He had been paying off the debt by instalments, but he's defaulted. Now he must pay back the money he owes in full today. Hello, Mr. Morris. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Here with a High Court writ, sir. 
the total amount of £1,762. Are you able to make payments? If not, we are instructed to remove goods, sir. I don't have the money at the moment. Right, okay. The total balance at the moment is £1,762.84. No, it's not. It's £1,000. You stuck 600 quid on when costs. At the moment, sir. You stuck right. 600 quid on costs. That's at the moment, how, sir. How do you justify 600 quid on the £1,000 debt? Well, that's something you need to take up the court, sir, not with us. So we can go around in circles with this all day long, so I'm going to change the situation, sir. Unless the balance is paid, we're here to remove the goods. Yeah, hey, hey, here's your copy, sir. I'll give you a copy of your paperwork, sir. Don't well, well, fucking grab things off like that. You grabbed it, sir. With the door open, Stuart takes the opportunity to make peaceful entry into the house. Pound this debt off at hundred pound a week. Right. You know what's going on. Okay, so the claim, don't, don't the claimant, act stupid. I'm not acting stupid. Yes, you know, so. most of this debt has been paid off. Right. There's an outstanding balance, then, sir. So what we're here to do now, sir, is to collect the balance. If not, we're instructed if to the balance is, If the balance is paid, in full... I don't right. have the money. Right. Let, well, let me just explain, sir. I if, don't have the money. All right. Right, I've had to close my fucking office down. Mm -hmm. Right, and I've had to lay staff off. Mm -hmm. I don't have the money. Okay. You have been making payments to water, though. Yes, I have. Why have you stopped? I've got no money coming in. I'm due money in this week. That's when somebody that's owed me money for eight months. Yeah. And we're going to ring your company up and I was going to offer them 300 quid and then start making payments again. I own money on North West Water and I'm paying them off at £100. And there's a limit. There's a limit to what I can do. Yeah. It's clear that Mr Morris is facing financial difficulties. But the agents are duty bound to get this case resolved one way or another. Stuart goes to clamp Mr Morris's Mercedes outside and calls for a vehicle check. We're currently at the property at the moment. We've seized a vehicle, a Mercedes CL500. Could you do HPI on it, please? Bloomberg CL500, auto, yeah, clear finance. The vehicle, I reckon, is worth about 750 quid. OK. As the car appears to be worth less than half the value of the debt, the agents will have to look for other assets inside the house to offset the balance. We'll have to remove goods, sir. Then remove the car. OK, and we'll be removing goods inside the property the, as well. The property as well, that won't cover the debt, so not that vehicle. It's in, of the age. It so there'll be cover. goods inside the property as well, sir, and if we do Well, do this that, is rented property. It's owned by my sister. Right. What about the goods, sir? Well, I'm going to get my sister down, it's her property. Yeah, if you haven't got any evidence to prove the goods belong to her, then we will be removing no, them, sir. No, you won't. We will be, sir. No, you won't. Yes, we will, sir. No, you won't. It's her property. Right. You keep saying that, sir, but it's not going to stop what we're it's doing. It's got a fucking land registry okay, fucking proves it. don't swear at me, sir. I'm not swearing Let, at you. Get off my property. I'm not going anywhere, sir. It's quite frustrating for us when the debtor doesn't want to play game. I mean, if we're there to resolve the matter or try and work with them, and he's just not interested in even talking to you, it's frustrating because at the end of the day, we know we will get it resolved one way or the other, but before it gets to that stage of removing, we would like to resolve the matter. Mr. Morris calls his sister. Whilst they wait for her to arrive, Stuart starts an inventory. So how long have you rented this house, sir? Seven years. Seven years. And uh, everything in the house was in the house when, when yes. you moved in? Right, even that TV that's isn't seven years old, let's be honest. So you're saying that your sister bought that for you? Yeah, I bought that. Right, there we go, sir. So there are goods in here that belong to you. OK, take the fucking TV. Yeah, there we go, sir. Take the fucking TV. Do you know what? Because of your attitude, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm not going to pay a penny now. The TV seems to be the only asset inside worth seizing. But then Stuart spots something. That laptop belongs to uh, to my limited company. Okay. It alone. Okay. So, have you got any? Can you just prove that with some documentation? Yeah, the emails so. are at my office. Okay. No problem. What we'll do is we'll get it removed today. It is then stored. That belongs. Don't touch me. That sir. belongs to that Do belongs to the me. limited you touch company. Again, sir, that belongs to my limited company. You touch me again, That's sir. Fine. I'll ring the police That's and you'll fine. be arrested. Don't ring the fucking police. With Mr. Morris in direct conflict with Stuart, the case has taken a nasty turn. Stuart must try and make Mr. Morris understand that the laptop will be seized unless he can provide proof it belongs to his company. But he's not backing down. This will be removed. It's been removed at the moment, sir. Don't try and obstruct me doing my job, sir. That belongs to my limited company. 
You will have time to, to get documentation together, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is so I'm going to secure this in the van, so I believe that you try and take it and try and hide it, OK? That's fucking outrageous. The defendants use tactics that are aggressive, abusive, it just makes us more determined and uh, it doesn't throw us off the scent, it keeps us tracked on exactly what we want to do. It makes us even more determined to get a result. The agents have been in the house for 20 minutes when Mr Morris's sister, Fiona, arrives. Morning. Morning. He's in there. Good morning. I told them it's your property and I told them it's, it, the contents belong to you and they need proof. Can I discuss the case with your sister? Yes, sir? you can. Right. Because the gentleman who was on a payment plan but he stopped paying and now we've been instructed to collect the full outstanding balance. The vehicle has been seized outside and that won't cover the debt, so we'll have to remove goods from the property. Everything here belongs to me. Well, that TV doesn't. We've already established that, so I'm not going to go around in circles. I want to talk to my brother on my own. Yeah, sure, yeah, but we won't be leaving the property. We'll go in a different room, but we'll have to stay in the property. Yeah, yeah, of course, okay. not a problem. Sometimes defendants get themselves into a mess, a financial mess, maybe a business venture that's gone wrong. Due to no fault of their own, they find themselves in a situation where we're on their doorstep. Nine times out of 10, it's usually parents or brothers and sisters that actually help the person that's in distress, which, which is a good thing to see. Minutes later, the debtor's sister wants to start negotiating. Is there... And a certain amount that could be given today to give my brother an opportunity. It needs to be paid in full. He's been on a payment plan already. That's already been paid. And he's broken it, so that's why the client wants the money all. And how long are you prepared to give? It's ten past seven now. As a gesture of goodwill, we'll give it till quarter past eight. And that's us being here for nearly two hours. The deadline has been set. If the money can't be raised in full in the next hour, Mr. Morris's assets will be seized. I'm leaving the property to do something and then I'm going to come back. Okay, no problem. Do you know how long that'll be, roughly? Ten past eight, did you say? Yeah. Ten past eight. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, tell me the truth. You're going off to see if you can get your sort the money out for me. With Mr. Morris's sister gone to try and raise some funds, Stuart tries to find out more about the case. Graham, where's the parking from? They're a private parking company and it states quite clearly mm. that the first two hours are for free. Yeah. Now, I used to go there first thing in the morning for coffee, so I never stayed there more than an hour. No. And a lot of times I would turn up before 8 o'clock. It was a ticketing machine and the machine didn't get turned on till 8. Right. And then they'd slap tickets on. Hmm. But it, it must have been a few times. It, it, 15 tickets. Yeah. I'm going to appeal this. Yeah. You feel entitled to appeal it, that's entirely your choice. To us, a route is black and white. OK, I'm not the judge. You can tell me your story, you can tell me your life story. I can't change anything on that day about the outcome of the writ. It's not going to change anything because the writ is active and it stands and we have to execute it. Five minutes before the deadline expires, Fiona comes back. I'm going to make the payment today. Right. This is a debit card. Okay. Right. okay. Is that your card now? Right, you can just enter your pin. She offers to pay her brother's debt in full. Okay, let's talk about it afterwards, please. Yeah, it's gone through. The card is accepted. And Mr. Morris's debt is cleared by his sister. That's all your paperwork. Keep hold of that. That's your laptop. Take All right, Graham, we'll be on our way. The agent's perseverance has paid off. <sighs> yeah, cracking work, mate, cracking work. Last year, nearly 30% of people who sought advice from a leading debt charity owed money to family and friends. The average amount owed exceeded £4,500, while the total amount owed has risen by nearly £200 million since 2014.
High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Havant on the south coast. Miserable weather. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. They have a writ to collect just over £8,500 owed by Luke Ferrugia to a friend. I'm going to go and pay a visit to a Mr Luke Ferrugia okay. to collect £8,591.71. pence. That's a lot of money. Mr Ferrugia borrowed the money from the claimant six years ago for a deposit on a house, but failed to pay it back. The case was escalated to the High Court, and now Mr Ferrugia must pay the money he owes in full today. Based on the weather, I'm hoping he lets us in. Yeah. I want to get my hair wet. That dog's next door, mate. Yeah, I heard a door close. I heard a bang. A dull thud. I've just seen him. I know you're in, mate. I can see you through the window. Can you come to the door, please? Well, if you if you want to speak to me, I'll explain what this is about. He's coming to the door. I didn't realise you were coming to the door. My name's Gary Brown. This is my colleague, Connor Jackson. We're here about a legal matter. This is a high court writ. Yeah. Can I, yeah. Can I step in the dry? Yeah, that's all right, mate. Come here. Do you mind if I get dressed then? Get all right, mate. Mr. Ferrugia's girlfriend is also at home. Do were you involved in this as well? Or? Oh God, no! I've only been reading three years. That you're talking this. This happened five, six years ago. Oh wow. Okay, a long time ago then. How much it was. he gone for? Um, well, he's he's taking you to court for six thousand seven hundred fifty-seven. Oh, no, he didn't even lend me that much. I think it was about fifteen hundred quid, two thousand pounds, something like that. With interest, court costs and legal fees now added, the scale of the debt has clearly come as a shock. We're here to collect £8,597. Oh, I've got £8,000. So I've got anything worth £8,000. The money that he's wanting is the money he gave me to pay for the deposit. Ah, on okay. The that I was living at. Because I was, I was living at my nan's and things. So look, I'm giving you the money and that. You know what I mean? To sort of like help yeah. get started. And so I'll pay you back, mate. Don't worry about it. Really? Did he, he? He said, "Don't worry about it." Yeah, that's what honestly. Because I wouldn't say that if I'd lent you like six. No, I was. Now Gary needs to get this case resolved, one way or another. What do you do for a living? Uh, ground work for labour. You know what I mean? So I bust my bollocks, and I've got no idea this is going on, and then you turn up. This writ here orders us to remove goods right. unless the debt's paid. It's all less stuff. So. so. Everything. Um, it's in the Argos car, which is on mine, sofas and my finance, cars, my finance. Okay. All of it's mine. He had nothing when I met him. I'm not even or by at the moment because I'm self employed and that, and like I said, the majority of this shit in this house is hers. With most of the assets in the house belonging to Luke's girlfriend, Gary changes tactics. I'll be reasonable with you and I'll, I'll give you 15 minutes to make some phone calls, see if somebody can help. I need time, mate. I'm self employed, like I said, and that. I've literally got fuck all. It's not, a morning isn't enough time to sort this out. The clock is ticking. If Mr Ferrugia can't raise any funds before the deadline, he stands to lose what little he has. Gary and Connor were in Havant on the south coast. I know you're in, mate. I can see you through the window. Pursuing a debt of over £8,000 owed by Luke Ferrugia to a former friend. He didn't even lend me that much. I think it was about 1,500 quid. The defendant said he couldn't pay. Which she got. Fuck all. But Gary set a deadline to see whether he could raise any funds. I'll be reasonable with you and I'll, I'll give you 15 minutes to make some phone calls, see if somebody can help. Now, while Luke makes some calls, Gary and Connor start an inventory of goods belonging to him they could seize to offset the debt. Got all these different games down here, all these different consoles. And then there's loads of old ones there. Two boxes of uh, Halo slip limited edition. They're 40 quid each. You got a GameCube. Be a shame to have to take all this stuff. With little of value belonging to Luke inside the house, Connor checks out the garage. And finds a motorbike. Worth as much as 500 pounds at auction, 
the agents might finally have found an asset worth seizing. Connor checks the license plate online and goes back inside with the news. We have a bit of an issue, guys. The bike is not on finance. No, I forgot. I got out alone for what, it. What, uh, a motorbike? Way. Mountain bike? Motorbike. It's a Yamaha 125, so... With his bike now at risk, Luke has an idea. What, what about you there? As a last resort, his girlfriend rings her grandparents. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, it might be, it might, it might not be that bad. That's my granddad to be good to live. That's not good. It's probably just moaning at his dad who's got me into oh, shit. On. Which one of you two is in charge? Me. Oh, he's in charge. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Uh, How much are you able to? Probably three. Three? I mean, that's going to be the best that we're going to be able to do. We've got literally no one else to get any money on. That is it. Okay. Um. Okay, I'll, I'll accept. I'll accept three thousand pound. We'll do an arrangement for the rest. Thank you. Bye Thank you. Bye. bye bye. The older generation quite often bail out the younger generation, whether it's grandsons, granddaughters. I see it quite a lot. The older generation seem to quite often be those people that people that owe money tend to turn to, whether it's because they are a bit a bit wiser in terms of managing money. I, I would imagine that's got something to do with it. With a lump sum payment of £3,000, Gary now needs to put a payment plan together to clear the rest of the debt. The conversation we need to have now is how much can you pay monthly? 50 quid and I could probably say safely at the moment that I could probably pay that, but I don't want to say I'm going to pay more and then not be able to afford it and then have more shit and then have you come back here. You know what I mean? Gary calls the office to see if the client will accept £3,000 today and £50 a month towards the £8,000 debt. He wants it higher than that. Right, OK. Bearing in mind, he, um, the debtor's not in work at the minute, or when he does work, it's it's here and there. I can, I can only say what the client's yeah. just telling me. All right. Bye. Bye. Luke, um, they've just got hold of the client. And he said he's not accepting 50 quid a month. He wants more than that. I've busted my ass to give you what I've got now, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking on the edge. I accept that. But that's that's his response. So what's he going to think is a reasonable amount then? Because I could say £100 a month and he could still say no. And I'm not going to stay calm forever. I'm not being horrible. Now you're doing your job, mate. You've been in my house for two hours fucking my shit up. I've got you three grand. I'm not fucking... I'm, I'm not going any more than £100 a month. And that's me just clutching at straws just to get you out of my house, man. If he says no to that, then there's nothing. I can't give you no more money. I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got nothing anyway. Gary rings the office with the new offer. All right, cool. OK. Thanks, Gary. It's good news. My boss has said, set it up and we'll sell it to the client. Just make sure you stick to this because I don't want to come back. I don't want you to come back, mate. Print there and sign there, please. All right, that's it. All right, mate. I hope you get it sorted, all right? Take care. The case is resolved for now, but if Mr. Ferugia doesn't stick to his payment plan, the agents will be back. Sometimes the client just wants everything in one go, and it's, you can't get blood out of a stone. It's not possible. Well, they, in don't every... know, they don't know the situation on the ground, though, do they? They just see it as he owes me this much money, go and get it. Mm. You know, they don't know how people live day to day. No. On to the next one. The agents are back, new next Wednesday at nine. A pensioner's taking no prisoners on his street, not with the nightmare neighbour next door ripping up fence posts. New tomorrow at nine, but brand new next tonight. On-screen drama becomes a deadly reality in the EastEnders murderers. Try true crime, real tragedy.